Greetings, Grand Avenue. It's Wednesday. It's almost time for me to meet with a handful of friends to discuss our thoughts about today's Upper Room devotional. The devotional is appropriately entitled Waiting because, well, that's what I'm doing. I'm spending some time this week at my mom's house and helping to take care of her. One of my projects is to uh, work with contractors to get this wall completed. There was some damage earlier before she went in the hospital. Living in a COVID world and my mother's hospitalization has meant a delay in getting this project completed. And now I've been waiting for several hours. Chris said that he would be here to complete the work sometime late this morning or early this afternoon. Well, it's the early middle part of the afternoon. And you know what that means? Yes, I'm sitting here. And the truth is that I might not be doing anything else anyway, but when I have to wait, I suddenly start making a list in my mind of all the things that I could be doing with that time. In fact, I went online and I learned about how Americans spend their time while they're waiting. Indeed, do you know that as Americans in an average lifetime, we spend uh, one hour per day in line? Huh, that's two to three years of our lives that we spend just standing in one line or another. We spend two weeks in our life just waiting for a red light to turn so that we can move on in traffic. And we spend 43 days, a month and a half, waiting for customer service on hold. I don't know about you, but like the author of today's devotion, uh, I don't like waiting. But a spiritual teacher of mine says that uh, we can wait with patience. Patience is not the ability to wait. It's the attitude that we adopt while we are waiting. And indeed, if we put it in context, we can see things differently. If I had been in charge of making these repairs, I probably would have tried to do it all at once, and I would have made an even bigger mess for Chris to clean up when he came in. Chris is a master craftsman, so he knows that he had to take care of the things on the other side of the wall first, and then make sure that that was okay before he uh, repaired the sheetrock came back and mudded it, had to wait for the mud to dry and then sand it down. Then he could prime uh, the wall, go away and come back and put a final coat of paint on the top. We have to deal with the mess and the inconvenience of not being able to take a shower in the meantime, but in the long run, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be perfect. If I tried to do it, trust me, <laughs> it would have been a bigger mess for somebody else to come in and clean up. It's like that in my own life, too. Sometimes if I were trying to do things for myself and do things my way, I could have made a big mess for myself and for others who are around me in my life. But the more I surrender myself to God, who is, after all, a master craftsman, then as I wait patiently for God to be at work, uh, beautiful things can start to happen. Uh, this is the way that the prophet Isaiah puts it. Those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. When I get together with my small group, we're going to be discussing some questions. And as you read the devotion in the comments and description below this video, maybe these are some questions that you could share with a friend or two of yours. Do you dislike waiting as much as the author of today's devotion? When has waiting been specifically difficult for you? Uh, when have you had to adjust your attitude? And what scripture passages comfort you and remind you that God is always at work in your life? When Isaiah wrote those words, the people of God were in exile. Uh, but God was up to something, just the same way that God was up to something when the prophet, another prophet, Jonah, found himself in the belly of the big fish. Uh, it may feel in a COVID world as if we are <laughs> uh, stuck in the belly of a whale, but the truth is that while Jonah was in the belly of that whale, the whole time the whale was swimming back to the place where God needed Jonah to be. And in the end, Jonah had an opportunity for a new beginning. All that was wrong can be made right. Everything can be restored. If we place ourselves in the hands of God and watch and wait, my prayer is that you will indeed experience the same kind of revelation that Bertille does as she writes in today's devotion. 
shifting my attitude from one of impatiently waiting to the one of waiting upon the Lord has taught me that God is working even while I'm waiting, especially for those who are waiting for healing to come, for those who are waiting for test results from the doctor's office, for those who are waiting for the day when we can once again gather in person for worship at Grand Avenue. I ask that you would be keeping one another and me in your prayers. And indeed, we might pray this prayer together. Father God, teach us to wait upon you. Help us to know that you are always working for our good. Amen. And may God be with you until we meet again.